where we find ourselves in Cape Town, South Africa today. Um, could you give us a bit of a historical background? Um, Cape Town is a big city, three and a half million people in the Greater Cape Town. It's in uh, the Mediterranean region, which means that we have a winter rainfall. Um, the rainfall um, is variable. Many years we have over normal rainfall, many years we have below normal rainfall. In the case of a drought, most people don't really even notice it. We may have a few water restrictions and so on, but it goes, passes by and then we have a good year again and everything is fine. The issue right now is that our storage dams, where the water for Cape Town is stored, are all running very, very low. And based on the current consumption, there's a possibility within 100 days that we will actually run out of water. So we have five storage dams, and over the last three years, the rainfall has been well below normal. And these dams haven't filled up after the dry season, during the rainy season, to adequately supply the city. So the city now faces a severe shortage of water. Um, as a result of these three cumulative years of drought. South Africa is definitely a water-scarce country. Water-scarce country is one where the evaporation would be more than the rainfall. And that's certainly the case in South Africa. Now, it sounds like a silly thing. If the evaporation is more than the rainfall, then you have a deficit of water, which we actually do. The point is that it is so hot and there's so much evaporation that soils dry out. And then that's what we call the negative water balance. So we are a water scarce country. We do not get the average rainfall in the world. The average rainfall in South Africa is around about 500 millimeters a year. The worldwide average is over 700. So we are a very, very dry country. Although we do have wet rainy seasons, it's not as if we're a constant desert. So most of South Africa has summer rainfall and that summer rainfall increases towards the east, decreases towards the west. In the west you get maybe under 100 millimeters a year in some places. But in the far east you get over 1200, 1500. And we also have mountainous regions um, which have higher rainfall than the, than the flats. And that's where our storage dams are based, which is all logical. The people did this a long time ago and planned it very well. So the mountainous regions generally get higher rainfall. We collect the water there and we transport it to the areas of lower rainfall. So we make up for the scarcity by administering our water and taking it to places that need it the most. And then we also, many places in the country, take water out of the ground. Are we looking at drought or are we also looking at um, increased usage in a, in a growing modern city? Um, you would think so and certainly the population has increased and the consumption of water overall you'd think would have increased. But if you look at the figures over the last 20 years the demand for Cape Town as a city has actually been very stable. The increase hasn't been nearly as high as the population growth and the reason for this is the city's worked very hard at creating a low demand from people and also fixing up leaks and wastage. So whereas the city had planned many years ago for an increased usage of water, that usage actually hasn't taken place. And plans to increase the amount of water storage have actually been put on hold because the demand wasn't that high. And this creates what people might think now is a lack of planning. But in actual fact is the case that the demand for water didn't increase as much as the population did. What can we how can we be creative about not only mitigating but uh, putting in place structures that would prevent episodes like this happening again? That's a very interesting question because there are multi facets to that. The, the long term facet is that climate change is beginning to bite in the Western Cape. We know the temperatures are on the increase and with increased temperature comes increased evaporation, comes increased dryness of the soil and also increased usage of water. So even if the rainfall stays the same, it's likely that we become more water insecure in the future. However, the projections have also been showing that it's highly likely that rainfall is going to decrease and that's all Mediterranean regions around the world. So we will certainly not be the only city that, will, that is getting drier and will be getting drier. So in the long term, we need to try and combat climate change. And that's a difficult issue and a government level has to happen. On a shorter issue, um, the city needs to look at alternative water sources. So alternative water sources come naturally and also artificially. So naturally, one would look at increasing your dams, increasing the amount of water that you can take out of aquifers. And then ultimately, artificially, you'd be looking at converting seawater into fresh water. So those are some of the issues we're looking at. Now the city would actually need to take that into account in the short term and the long term. Um, in the short term, cities like South Africa look at their demand, 
for cities like Cape Town, look at their demand and their supply very, very closely. You try and decrease the demand and increase your supply. And that would happen worldwide. And we, unfortunately, are in a dry area that's be surrounded by a dry area, so we can't ship water in from somewhere else. Many other cities in the world can do that. So they can, can actually transport water to their city from somewhere where there is a surplus. And unfortunately, we can't do that. So creatively, we have to look at ways of either reducing the demand on the system, and that can be done in a few ways, like recycling or collecting rainwater, or we have to look at increasing the supply through artificial means. So building a desalination plant is very popular worldwide, and it's something Cape Town will have to look at in the long term. Increasing the amount of water that people can collect on their own, water harvesting, is very, very important. So if people can use water that they've collected themselves and not demand it from the city supply, that would be a very good thing to do. There are also ways of creating water, if you like, by reusing water in your household, by recycling water. You're creating water in, in, in effect because you, what you don't waste actually becomes useful again. So your total useful supply, taking waste water and using it to flush down toilets, is creating more water. So that's also a creative way of doing things. And I think we need to look creatively at reticulation within the city, creatively at reticulation within the house, and creatively at ways of collecting water.